Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine, coming to you with our weekly dictations. Um, you know, I was thinking last week we talked a lot about back pain specifically, so I started thinking about it a lot and thought we just need to talk about pain in general. You know, as a family doctor of 35 years and then an integrated med- medical specialist, what I realize is that people come to the doctor for one of two reasons, for the most part, unless it's something like an annual physical or they have a cold or a UTI or something. But most people that come to me are coming for one of two reasons. Either they're in pain or they're tired. So let's talk about the pain part. 20% of Americans will suffer from chronic pain. 20%. And the risk factors of being being a woman, being older, of course, living in poverty, and being unemployed when you previously had a employment. And a lot of reasons that chronic pain is because of that. As a matter of fact, it's the number one cause of disability in our country. Um, as a matter of fact, the total cost is more than diabetes, cancer, and heart disease combined from chronic pain. Um, back pain is the number one cause of chronic pain, like we talked about. Um, and then headaches are probably the second most common cause of chronic pain. Um, drugs only help a half of people with chronic pain. So that's kind of discouraging. Um, and as you know, with all the opiate crisis we have now, um, you know, pain has gotten a really bad name. I mean, we do have effective medications for pain out there, but because of misuse and the very addictive nature of opiates, um, it's really given it a bad name. And, you know, for the people that really need it, the people that don't need it have really almost ruined it for those people. Um, As you know, it's very hard to get your family doctor to give a prescription for longer than one to two days of an opiate. Matter of fact, we can't. You have to be certified in pain medicine now to do that. So in other words, you're going to be shunted off to a pain clinic if you want opiates. Um, the thing about opiates is you can get addicted to them in about two weeks. You know, I've had many friends, fellow physicians that have gotten addicted to opiates. It's ruined their careers. Uh, their family life, and everything else. Um, so it's a very serious problem. Fortunately, there's other ways you can you can do this. Uh, there still may be some people that have to have them, but they're in the vast minority. And we're making a lot of strides in you know, new ways to treat chronic pain that won't get you addicted to opiates. I mean, people that get addicted to, op- to opiates, they'll do anything to get them. I mean, it's amazing. They'll steal, they'll cheat, they'll lie, and it's really ruined a lot of people's lives. Um, if you go to our jail, you know, 90% of the people in there, it's, it's drug-related in some form or fashion. So very, very uh, disappointing, disheartening. But uh, So we have to find another way, and we have other ways. A lot of pain as you get older, and again, I'm talking about chronic pain, not acute pain, chronic pain, which means for weeks and months and even years. Um, Arthritis is a big cause of this pain, with back pain especially, not so with headaches, which are mostly migraine and tension, but um, as you get older, almost all of us have some arthritis. I know I do, and I have a lot of back pain as well. as a matter of fact, if I didn't have back pain, I'd probably feel like I was 20 years old. Um, so I have to kind of deal with it. And I try a lot of stuff for it, and a lot of it really helps, um, as I talked about last week with back pain. Um, but you need to reserve the opiates for acute pain, really, and not use them for chronic pain. Um, you can, of course, use the non anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, naproxen, um, my favorite one's probably the, the newer generation like Mobic or Celebrex. They, they're safer on your stomach, and they're dosed once a day and uh, tend to have some other benefits as well. Um, but you still don't want to take them all the time unless you have to because there's a slight increased risk of heart disease, just like there is 
with Motrin, increased risk of heart problems. So you have to be careful with whatever you take. I mean, it's, the one tip I'm going to give you, too, if you do use Motrin for chronic pain or Naperson or Mobic, Celebrex, um, take one Tylenol with it. It seems to work synergistically with that uh, NSAID to make it work a little better. Uh, that's one little trick that I've used. Um, but so be careful about opiates. Um, the thing about opiates, they work maybe for two weeks for pain anyway, and then they don't really help your pain. They just get addic addictive for you, and they give you a euphoria. Um, so you want to stay away the, from those for sure. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do with chronic back pain, like epidurals, facet joint injections, um, joint injections. Um, you know, um, the thing about that is, you know, some of the, you want to try to avoid surgery if you can, but surgery is curative of chronic osteoarthritis of knee or, you know, if you have a ruptured disc. So surgery, surgery certainly has a place in curing a lot of chronic pain. Uh, again, pain is a signal to your body that something's wrong. So never ignore pain it's your, it's your body signal it's really a great thing it's very helpful for people that can't feel pain there is a condition where some people feel no pain at all those people die young because they get injured or they go without knowing when they may have acute appendicitis etc so pain is a signal so always pay attention to it and make sure you see uh, a medical professional for that pain if it becomes chronic because there could be some other bad things that could happen with pain like cancer. Um, so um, one thing that we do in our clinic and a lot of doctors, I, I do a lot of sports medicine and a lot of orthopedic doctors do, are joint injections. These things work really well. Um, I know in our clinic a lot of times I'll do them in conjunction with Ernie Dixon, physical therapist, who has the ultrasound. We can kind of guide the needle placement. But uh, we've used cortisone for years and years and years. The thing about cortisone is you don't want to do too many of them. Two or three a year into, into each one joint that's causing you problems. Because cortisone really can, can hurt you too because not only can it bump your sugars up or, you know, cause a little um, hyperactivity, things like that, but they also can kind of, produce wear and tear on your cartilage and they can actually wear your tendons out too so it may be in a, in a way not great for you long term you know you can't inject into a tendon because that tendon can rupture if you do that so you got to be careful with placement one thing that i've uh, come across uh, one of my good orthopedic friends turned me on to this a while ago was a medicine i've been using for years called toradol and Toradol, we use it um, by oral route, PO that we call it, or intramuscular for, I've used it for kidney stones, migraines on patients, um, any kind of acute pain, uh, you can do a Toradol shot. And it's a non-narcotic, it's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Um, and it works really well for, for bad pain, it really does. But one thing that... Um, he kind of turned me on to is injecting it into joints and actually even muscles. It's a lot safer. It works very well to kind of break that pain cycle up. I know sports medicine professionals uh, in the NFL have been using it for years in that capacity. So it works really well. You can inject it into an elbow, knee, shoulder. Um, you can inject it into the back, um, Toradol. It, it works really well and may just break up that pain uh, that you may be cycling with. And it's definitely going to be a lot safer than injecting cortisone in there. So think about that, um, about Toradol. And there's also some new, talking about headaches, there's also some new headache medications for migraines that work very effectively, probably with less side effects than the triptans like we've used for years like Imitrax and Maxalt and, and that class. So think, ask your doctor about new treatments for migraines. There's even a once a month shot uh, that works really well for prevention of migraines. So there's a lot of things we're working on with pain. Of course, 
I encourage physical therapy. I'm all for chiropractors, um, last resort. Of course, surgery, it works very well. But think about your nutrition. You know, stay away from the inflammatory foods. Inflammation causes disease. It also causes pain in your joints and wear and tear of your joints like arthritis, which most of us get as we get older. Um, your posture has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, sitting too much, not moving. If you got a terrible bed, it could cause problems or poor sleep positions. Um, I know I just ordered myself an infrared sauna with all the spectrums. Um, and it's really, um, I haven't set it up yet, but I'm getting ready to. And by being in them, it's unbelievable for, for pain. It also is a great detoxifier. So think about an infrared sauna. Um, hot tubs and jacuzzis are great, especially if you have back pain. Um, sometimes even ice works for chronic pain. Sometimes you can alternate ice with heat, and I think it works great. Um, so keep down inflammation. Another interesting, I'm always kind of touting metformin if you can tolerate it on your stomach. Uh, metformin is a great anti-aging drug, and it's also good for weight loss. Um, it probably prolongs your life. It seems like every anti-aging conference I go through all over the country, most of the speakers will tell you what they take personally, and almost all of them take a little bit of metformin to bring that insulin down. Insulin is such an important hormone uh, when it comes to your overall longevity, and you know it may be the most important hormone there is. Um, so think about, but metformin, they've shown that it really may help reduce pain and inflammation from knee osteoarthritis. Um, so, you know, ask, ask me or your doctor about metformin. Um, another thing is uh, methotrexate, which we usually use for um, rheumatoid arthritis. But think, even they found out that osteoarthritis, or the arthritis of aging that most people get, um, the reason it causes pain is probably not because of just the wear and tear. It's really because it causes a synovitis, which is an inflammatory uh, condition of that synovial lining of your joint. And in a lot of cases, a medicine like methotrexate may help that. Um, so I'm not sure about some of the other biologics, if they help or not, but they do tampen down inflammation. But you got to be careful about some of those because they can decrease your immune system. So and there's certain things to follow. But um, So there's a lot of things. Of course, obesity really is is bad for joints and back. So anything you can do to eat better, move, get a good night's sleep, keep stress. A lot of pain is related to stress. And chronic pain almost always leads to depression. That's why sometimes with chronic pain, we'll use antidepressants. Cymbalta, which doesn't, to my mind, work that great for depression, but it works pretty good for chronic pain. Um, so it kind of goes together with it. But um, So think about your pain. If you're in a lot of chronic pain, you need to research that and don't give up on it. Don't just accept that I'm going to be in pain the rest of my life. There's a lot of neat things you can do about it uh, without getting on serious pain medication. So um, do your research. Come to Performance Medicine. We have a lot of modalities which we can help you with. And I hope this helps you. We'll see you next week. Thank you.